Good evening, it's time for the news right here on Times Television TTV and you're with me, Ronald Mpaso. Fresh the headlines. Additional 100,000 dosages of the AstraZeneca vaccine arrive in the country. Malawi Electoral Commission calls for adherence of electoral laws as by-elections fast approach. And in our special report, Sarah Chirora takes us to Mchinji, where one farmer is practicing permaculture. We have these and other stories. Stay with us. In our first story, additional 100,000 dosages of the AstraZeneca vaccine have arrived in the country, courtesy of the African Union. Co-chairperson of the Presidential Task, Task Force on COVID-19, Kumbi Zekando Duchiponda, says over 100,000 people have been vaccinated so far. She further advised those who tested positive for COVID-19 to delay the vaccination. March 27, 2021. The minister has also indicated that by Saturday, over 100,000 people in the country had received the vaccine since its launch. Nevertheless, Shibonda explained that although there is no contraindication on the uptake of alcohol and the AstraZeneca vaccine, guidance which applies for all vaccines is that one should refrain from alcohol three days after each injection. This, she says will give adequate time to assess oneself before and after the vaccine to avoid missing any adverse effects following the vaccination. The vaccination exercise was launched by President Lazarus Shakwira on 11th March 2021. Within 24 hours on Saturday, the country registered 43 new cases of COVID-19, 168 recoveries and one new death. Malawi Electoral Commission Chairperson Justice Chifundo Kachari has indicated that management of electoral processes is highly guided by laws and regulations. Justice Kachari has therefore said as such no one is allowed to approach the task the way he wants. He sounded the warning in Lilongwe today during the opening of the orientation workshop for polling equipment operators on results management. Matthews Kassanda has the details. Kashali has urged the equipment operators in the by-elections that will take place on Tuesday this week to follow what they have been taught by make trainers and that they are not at liberty to approach the task in the way they want or try to be creative and innovative no matter how efficient it may be. He says the operators just need to thoroughly follow the instructions given by trainers. The make chairperson further explained that the management of elections and results is a dynamic and changes do occur all the time as such even those who have worked with the commission before should follow what they have been taught now. Kachali has also warned the polling equipment operators about political affiliations stating that elections are about perceptions as such the operators should be nonpartisan. Chikondi Maunda is one of the equipment operators. We are doing training for capturing data for results and the field. So we are going to deploy that DC and some are going to be at the uh, National Tally Center. So we are going there to receive results from polling centers. So we are going to enter in our system. The by-elections will be conducted in Sanje Central, Sanje North, Chikwawa East, Karonga Northwest, Zumba Changalume, Ilongwen Sinja South, and Nchisi North. There will also be elections in Nivlidzi Ward in Balaka and Chitagale Ward in Mulanje. Greenbelt Authority is to start developing a 31 billion kwacha irrigation rice scheme in the area of traditional authority Kyungu in Karonga district in May. The scheme is aiming to develop 1,000 hectares of irrigable land for increased crop production 
and productivity, where an estimated 5,000 metric tons of rice would be produced annually. First on Marigezo with the report. At an engagement with Karonga District Executive Committee, Green Belt Authority Acting Chief Executive Officer Emon Mluila said the establishment of the scheme will come with the construction of an agro-processing facility for value addition to increase domestic and export markets. According to Mluila, the primary target group will be smallholder farmers who have access to modern irrigation infrastructure. Mluila said farmers are expected to form an association which will enter into partnership with Green Belt Authority and create a joint venture company to manage the scheme. We had problems with a section of farmers who are, not still, uh, who are still skeptical about this project. Uh, although we have a good number of farmers that have joined in, how do you know? It is proposed that the proposed shareholding is for 9% for Green Belt Authority and 51% for the farmers. In his remarks, Director of Planning and Development for Karonga District, David Kondwe, said the initiative is economically sound as the targeted area is expected to develop. We have a number of places like Hara, you have Chonanga, you have Uowe, you have Rufiria. They grow rice, but they growing just like smallholder farmers. There are in small areas where they are sort of doing some packaging, but not a lot of value addition. So, differently, those will be future plans where they have to be equally targeted by uh, other partners who may come along the way. So, differently, this is a good start. And uh, if it spreads across the district, it means uh, 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 rice will be sold out uh, to people in a much better way. Out of the 14 million US dollars total capital for the project, 15 million US dollars will be used for scheme construction and 25 million US dollars will be used for agro-processing facility. It is expected that at least 14,000 individual farmers will benefit from the scheme, creating about 300 permanent jobs. The story of Luwayo Biz Week is one that gives the unique art of maximizing knowledge, space and potential to yield perfect results. In our special report, Sarah Chirora takes us to Mchinji at Permaculture Paradise Institute where one farmer is practicing permaculture and a type of agriculture that mimics natural ecosystems. By definition, permaculture can be understood as the growth of agricultural ecosystems in a self-sufficient and sustainable way. This form of agriculture draws inspiration from nature to develop synergetic farming systems based on crop diversity, resilience, natural productivity and sustainability. Biswick, who is the executive director of Pemakacha Paradise, took us around his farm where he is doing what he best described as a bit of everything using the natural method. He grows various crops in one field, a system which helps preserve fertility of the soil. Not only does he grow crops for consumption in this type of farming, but he also has fields of grass and various trees that help in retention of soil fertility. Beswick says not only does this help with the fertility of the soil, but also it is a cheap way of growing the crops organically. So it's more of a lifestyle, so kind of like um, um combining agriculture and the way we live. There are a lot of elements fitting into each other. So that's what we focus on in this type of agriculture because in the conventional way of farming, uh, they only focus on one crop one time. Um, but in this type of agriculture, we look at every system as just an element within the whole system fitting into each other. On the same farm, Biswick has livestock. The livestock, he says, helps in the production of manure that are used for biogas and in the field for various crops. He says this type of farming is derived from the idea that most Malawians neglect what is around them and tend to look at other expensive ways of doing farming. So we also keep animals on the farm uh, to demonstrate the harmony that exists between animals. 
you know. So we call this animal kingdom where we've got turkeys, guinea fowls, chickens, ducks, uh, we have sheep, as well as goats living in harmony, rehabilitating our landscapes uh, whilst uh, providing for their needs. So in the environment where these animals are kept is different to the cages that most of the, most of the people um, keep them. Because, you know, most of the chickens are kept in cages, you know, and they are only given full feed and in return they get eggs. So these are diseased chickens, animals. So it's insanity, madness to believe that diseased animals would provide you good health and good nutrition. This is the reason why on the farm here we've got this demonstration to show to the world that, you know, look, animals in the jungle live a free life and they, they have got this liberty, natural liberty. So that's why we demonstrate that here on the farm. And the manure from the animals goes into the biogas. But how has this type of farming impacted others in the district? Enoch Kaingo from Kampita Village and Pemakacha Paradise Institute says their skills have improved tremendously. We are taught about rice farming and a combination of various crops. However, since they are farmers, we cannot give them all crops at once. We split the programs so this time we are working with them on rice farming. Once worked with Permaculture Paradise Institute. At first we had doubts when they told us about the rice, but later we realized that it was beneficial. They trained us on how to go about rice farming. Once in a while, they remind us on how we are supposed to do it. Looking at the scope of his project and the impact he is having on agricultural practices in his area and the country at large, his ideas are truly inspiring and destined to achieve much more in years to come. You're watching the News on Times Television, TTV. We we'll now take a break. We'll be back shortly. For a better tomorrow, don't forget to do the one, two, three with Colgate every night. If there's one thing that all soaps do, it's wash. From buckets to basins, bathrooms to streams, and everything in between. <laughs> all soaps wash. Yes, but Protex is different. Its reinvented formula with flaxseed oil boosts your skin's natural anti-germ defenses by 10 times more, protecting you against 99.9% .9 of germs. So what keeps us healthy? Protex! Good health starts here. Define your surroundings with the color of your choice. Make it warm, creative, friendly, and vibrant. Coat textures. Durable color options. With up to 1,200 color shades to choose from. Be it economy range or premium range paints. Innovative paint and color technology in every drop. Available in Blantar, Build Africa, and Limby Corner Mart Building, and in Nilongwe, along M12 Road, close to Gateway Mall. Tropical Paints, your world in color. Sunshine Green Soap is the best of all the best of Sunshine Green Soap is the best of all 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 
Koma soru kukalita ndi number one. Dingo diru, sunshine green soap watsobano. Ndi more. Welcome back. Information Minister Gospel Kazako has held digital broadcasting technology saying it will enhance efficiency and the quality of the broadcast media industry at affordable prices. Kazako was speaking during a total shutdown of analog broadcasting in Iliwonde over the weekend. Jameson Chauluka has a report. Malawi migrated to digital broadcasting a few years ago to comply with the guidelines of the International Telecommunications Unit. Some media houses, however, here and there have been using analog technologies. Over the weekend, the Minister of Information, Gospel Gazako, completely switched off analog broadcasting, which means that broadcasting is now 100% digital. Gazako said the move will help Malawians enjoy high-quality broadcasting services at affordable prices. He held the coming of Malawi Digital Broadcasting Network Limited, saying the local platform for digital broadcasting will help to give the, the people content. Uh, but most of the um, uh, uh, content providers, most of the television stations, have expressed interest to come on this platform so that one, they are able to um, uh, do something that uh, has a commercial sense. Uh, and then uh, they will be able to employ more people, they will be able to give you better content. There are times when we are admiring South African uh, channels, for example. There are times when we are uh, admiring American channels, for example. We are admiring um, European uh, television channels, for example. All those are paid for. This is why you find that people will fight and will work very hard to make sure they produce the very best of content so that people are able to comfortably pay. We know that as we are taking um, off, there will be some... Benson Tembo, Malawi Communications Regulatory Authorities, taking advice on digital migration, said the migration has been challenging. It was going to be difficult for countries to provide spectrum so that they can have radio stations as many as they are intended to be. Because that would require a lot of frequencies. And because of that, the digital uh, format or the digital technology provides that one frequency can take 20 or 22 channels. Whereas in the analog format, one frequency takes one channel. So that meant that for one frequency, there would be many players. And therefore, that's why countries decreed together with ITU. Malawi is now among eight African countries who have totally switched from analog to digital broadcasting. The Malawi Local Government Association has embarked on a process of drafting bylaws which would help fight gender-based violence at local level. The drafting of the bylaws will start with Mbelwa and Nchisi district councils. More in this report. MAGA President Wald Ndipo said the bylaws will help address the problem of gender-based violence, sexual and reproductive health rights, as well as early marriages. Ndipo said localizing the national laws on these vices would contribute to the reduction of the cases in these two districts. The drafting of the laws is being done with financial support from UN Women. UN Women National Programs Officer Pamela Nkwamba Matumbi said tackling gender-based violence at the local level would be critical in ending the vice. I think as UN Women, um, we wanted to help this project because we know that Mark goes the local structures, in terms of strengthening local structures. So, and we know that women councillors are one of, the, one of the very important institutions that is there in the local councils in terms of advancing the gender agenda. So working with MAGA and looking at issues of gender-based violence being rampant in the local, in the local, in the districts, in the local areas, we thought that if we strengthen uh, uh, those local councils through MAGA, 
then I think we're going the right way because this, these are the castles that live with the people. Director of Local Government Services in the Ministry of Local Government, Pio Emawa, said the bylaws will be replicated in other districts in the country. The formulation of gender-based violence, one, are important simply because issues of gender-based violence are issues at local level, are issues at ground level. So the only way to tackle this issue is to come up with a bylaw. A bylaw is like a law at the local level, whereby you say someone who has been found okay, doing gender-based violence, what is it that the community at the local level will do? What will be the punitive measures? What is it that at the local level they should actually come up with that law? Malawi last year saw a spike in gender-based violence, a development that led President Lazarus Chakwera to set up a task force to look into the matter. That's the news for now, but before we go, the headlines again. Additional 100,000 dosages of the COVID of the AstraZeneca vaccine arrive in the country. Malawi Electoral Commission calls for adherence of electoral laws as by-elections fast approach. And in our special report, Serach Rora to Kastum Chinji, where a farmer is practicing permaculture. You've been with me, Ronald Mpaso, but you can get more on these and other stories by visiting our website, www.times.mw, liking our Facebook page, Times360 Malawi, and following us on Twitter, at Times360 Malawi. Remember to wash your hands regularly, observe social and physical distance, and mask up. Stay safe, and have a lovely night.